Welcome to Christ Alone Evangelical Lutheran Church of Thienesville in Mequon, Wisconsin, as we gather together to worship our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, specifically talking about the kingdom of God, how it comes to us, and our privilege to share in spreading the word. May the Lord bless us as we worship together today. Our worship opens with the singing of our first hymn. It's Psalm 133, How Very Good and Pleasant. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, 
I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ have mercy. For the well being of your holy church and all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord, o Lord. Let us pray. Divine Master, Triune God, you rule over your kingdom of grace in ways that make our hearts throb with joy. This day, bless the eyes of our heart that we may rejoice in your growing kingdom and devote our energies to sharing it with this dying world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first scripture lesson is recorded for us in the book of Jonah, chapter 3. We know Jonah to be the reluctant prophet. In God's kingdom, he was to share the word, and yet he ran away from that opportunity. The Lord gave him a second chance. That brings us to our reading. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, Forty more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did 
and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. This is the word of our God. I now invite you to join with our choir as they lead us in Psalm 92. Our second lesson is recorded for us in the book of Colossians, chapter 1. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you've already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, The gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. This, too, is the word of our God. We follow our verse of the day, Alleluia. May your priests be clothed with righteousness. May your saints sing for joy. Alleluia. Our gospel is recorded for us in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, where Jesus teaches us about the kingdom of God and how it grows. He, that would be Jesus, also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed in the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? 
It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them, as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. The Gospel of our Lord. Our worship continues with our hymn of the day, Creator Spirit, by whose aid. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll be following the gospel reading for this service as we come together. Take a look at a little packet of seeds and ask yourself the question, what makes this packet so special? You could have dozens of answers. These seeds could add beauty and color to your yard as a garden bursts into life with color. They could grow into trees to provide shade on a hot, sunny day with branches and your children can climb in it. The birds can build their nests there. They can make the yard more friendly to birds and squirrels who love the shelter of a good tree. Understand they might even add financial value to your home as well. They could grow into a privacy hedge, like a fence between your yard and your neighbors. Because you know how they say, tall fences make good neighbors. They could provide vegetables and fruits, making summer one of those really enjoyable times where, boy, it's all fresh for eating. All that out of just a few little seeds. The miraculous ability of seeds to create plant life around us, well, that gave Jesus a great illustration to talk about his kingdom of salvation. Listen to the words he speaks today 
and marvel at the thought how powerful the seed. Out of death, it creates life. Out of something small comes something big. Now, if you really wanted to get Jesus' blood pumping, you know, all you have to do is ask him serious questions about the kingdom of God. Recorded for us are 74 times in the New Testament that the phrase kingdom of God was used, and it was mostly by Jesus. He loved helping people understand God's kingdom. Unlike earthly kingdoms, this one wasn't bordered by rivers and mountains and oceans. It wasn't defended by armies, ruled by kings or politicians. It was made up of people who were no longer under the control of Satan and his army and demons. Now God's Son was ruling in their hearts by faith. He was setting them free from guilt, leading them with love and motivating them to love him back and love others as well. The kingdom of God was God's greatest creation in this world. Think a few of the things you know about the kingdom of God as Jesus shares it. Let the little children come to me and forbid them not, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. The coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed, nor will people say, here it is, or, or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. And then he also adds, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Simply put, you could say that the kingdom of God is his true, invisible church of believers on earth from every generation and every part of the world. And Jesus is passionate about it. But how does his kingdom of God grow on earth? That's an issue Jesus deals with in the two parables of our gospel. In the first one, he says, A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he doesn't know how. He compares it to a farmer who scatters seed in his field. It's an amazing thought. The ground is, well, let's say, not impressive. It's just there, various shades of brown and dirt. The seed is also not real impressive. It's the little dry, dead-looking speck. But put it in the ground, little water, little sunshine and warmth, and suddenly... The field is covered with green plants bearing more seeds. Life is created while the farmer is sleeping away in his bedroom. He doesn't even know how it works. He just knows that it does. Jesus thinks of the word of God that way as a seed. It's living and active. Jesus said, my words to you are spirit and life. It is the word of salvation we come to treasure. That word is what brings spiritual life to the dry, dead earth of human souls. We know that it makes a huge difference, whether it's seed or something else that is planted in the dirt. <laughs> Try planting a bunch of buttons in the soil or M&Ms or some Skittles. Would you expect a crop? Only real seeds have life within to create new life. Only God's word has the life within it to create spiritual life in the human heart. Another thought here. There's a human element to planting a crop, isn't there? The farmer must choose a seed carefully. The farmer must scatter the seed properly. The farmer may spray fertilizer, weed killer, whatever, to aid the growth, and he might even put up some scarecrows to keep the birds away but he doesn't mess with the plant. He doesn't go out and pull each plant up a little bit, half an inch to help it grow along. No, he leaves it alone. And while he is going about his normal routine of going to sleep and waking up in the other chores, the plant grows. God's kingdom is like this too. 
while we may be involved in spreading God's word, it grows in ways, let's be fair, we don't understand. God's kingdom certainly comes by itself, Martin Luther wrote about the petition in Your Kingdom Come. Ours is to sow the seed. Oh, we can hamper the coming of God's kingdom if we plant carelessly or if we don't plant the word at all. But we do not make it grow. God does. Some of you may have seen an article in the Ford in Christ magazine telling how archaeologists found some old dried dates buried in rubble that were from the time of Christ. They decided to see if they could grow. So they planted and watered the seeds. As water soaked into the seed, it activated 2,000-year-old enzymes. Energy stores that were laid up during the days of the apostles began to unleash new growth. No one would have thought it possible. But God knows the seeds he made. And he knows how to make them grow. It's amazing, isn't it? Out of dry dirt and ugly seeds, God creates new life. And all out of a simple message about Jesus. Planted among simple human beings. The kingdom of God bursts into life and grows. Out of death, the seed of God's word brings life. It brought you to life. And put heavenly joy and comfort in your hearts. But there's another comparison Jesus makes. Out of something small comes something really big. Listen as Jesus continued. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. What he's saying about the kingdom of God starts out very small, like a mustard seed. The seed is only about two millimeters across. Currently, for today, you could compare it to smaller than a radish seed if you plant seeds at all. I could probably put about 5,000 of them in my pockets and you wouldn't even notice. Yet just one of them could grow into a tree big enough to dwarf the room, the whole area of the church. Birds could even nest in its branches. The kingdom of God is bigger than any of us could ever imagine. We may even see a portion of it. As three German pastors met in Milwaukee to organize themselves into a synod. Who would have guessed that 170 years later, that synod, the Wisconsin Synod, would stretch around the world? When white missionaries arrived in Apache land, not too long after the Apaches had been defeated and forced to stay on reservations by the white man, who would have guessed that years later, thousands of Apaches would confess faith in Jesus Christ? In our Old Testament reading, Jonah witnessed the huge, to the whole, huge city of Nineveh repent of its sins through its simple preaching. In our other Bible reading today, Paul was thrilled to know how the gospel was growing in Colossae, a city he had never ever visited. To this day, the world religion known as Christianity is still the largest recognizable religion on earth with over 2.2 billion souls. And that's with a B. And we get that chance to work for its growth and work in this kingdom. Let me focus especially on one way to help make this kingdom grow. Even if we're not associated with it always, Sunday schools. Over the past year, we've had to back off on our organized Sunday school program because of the COVID concerns. But we look forward to reestablishing a vibrant Sunday school this fall. We're in the process of recruiting more teachers who are willing to devote time and the love of souls of boys and girls at our congregation. But did you consider just how powerful the simple act of teaching Sunday school can be, of sharing the gospel message, of planting the seeds? It was the year 1858 in the city of Boston. Edward Kimball was a young Sunday school teacher who made it a habit to personally talk to each student 
to know Christ as their Savior. He was concerned about one of his students who worked in a shoe store. One day, Kimball visited the young man and told him about Christ. That student was Dwight Moody, who eventually left the shoe business to become one of the greatest evangelists of all time. Moody became an international speaker. Matter of fact, in one sermon, he told the story of his Sunday school teacher. That story touched the ears of a young pastor named Frederick Meyer. In his dynamic preaching, Meyer would later touch the life of Wilbur Chapman. All names strange to you, but follow along. Chapman, in turn, touched the life of a young man named Billy Sunday with the Word of God. And Billy Sunday would preach later to the heart of a 16-year-old named Billy, Billy Graham, who some have guessed communicated the seed of the gospel message to more people than any other person in history. And it all started with a Sunday school teacher who cared for the souls of his students. Don't give up sharing the word. Don't give up, teachers. You might think that you're not getting through to the children in your class. You're not getting through to your son or daughter. But God is using you to bless their lives. Keep planting the word. Keep planting the seed. Rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. The joy of Jesus' lesson is that it's the power of life and salvation in the word. It's not in us or in our ability to be real persuasive or really glib at the words. It is an otherworldly message that's been put into our hands. We're just the farmers who scatter the seed as well as we can with the time and opportunities we've been given. Don't keep the seed in your pockets. Scatter it and watch in amazement as God will make it grow. Amen. And now may the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ ever keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. We continue as we confess our Christian faith that faith which God has planted in us with his word and nurtured and brought along will use the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate to the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join in prayer. Gracious God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and through him also our true Father, we thank you for our earthly fathers and all the blessings that are ours through them. On this day set aside for honoring fathers, we ask you to impress all fathers with their responsibility as parents. Help them in holiness and zeal to provide for the physical needs of their families and grant them grace to rear their children in the way of your blessed word. Give them joy as their children grow in the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of their greater Father in heaven, to whom we also pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude our worship as we join in singing the hymn, We Walk by Faith and Not by Sight. We're so glad you were able to join us to this day as we gave worship and glory to God, the one who has done all things well for us. May you be blessed throughout this week to be not only part of the kingdom, but part of the growth of the kingdom of God. Please join us again next week as we once again come to worship our Lord and Savior.